thank you for all of you to come here. It's a great pleasure to see you here in, in our home environment. That's very nice. Very nice. And I, I'll try just to, whenever it is uh, updating this um, projector, I will try to just give a, a short introduction of what we mean when we are talking about evidence-based research. So I will maybe say some of the same things as Elisa and Beard already have, but just to, so we're all on the same page. That, that would be nice. It should work now. So, you know, first of all, this is a cost action. And, and you know, yeah, as you can see, evidence-based research is why we call it EVBRES. We should have a unique abbreviation that was a demand. And it runs from October the 17th of 2018 to the uh, 16th of October 2022. Four years. Uh, so, a cost action is a network dedicated to scientific collaboration. And one should, we should really be aware of that. It is money for collaboration. And it's actually complementing national research funds. And that's, a that's one of the challenges for us in this uh, cost action. That, well, the money we have for now is for us to meet, which I think is very crucial and very important. But we do not have money for having uh, people to help to do some of the jobs, so we, are, we, we need uh, that too. Uh, you should also be aware that this was an application which uh, I think we applied three times uh, to the uh, cost association, uh, and it was the evidence-based research network who prepared those, prepared those application. So you could say that how do we make sure that this is not just lasting four years, but it is having a sustainability for many years ahead? Because, sorry to say, even though that a number of people just recently said, oh, we know about that. I mean, Claire just had a talk with one important person in relation to this. This is no problem anymore. We know about that. People are, are, are having them evidence-based. Unfortunately, I will show you some data not, uh, not uh, making that so obvious. Uh, thus, we need to do this work for a longer time, and that's what the Evidence-Based Research Network will help and do. So, you know, uh, the scientific ideal, all know this quote by Newton. There's another quote here where, where Lord Rayleigh actually stated that if we just keep up piling up the research, it will soon be crushed under its own weight. And remark, he said that in 1884. I don't know what you have been saying today, just figuring out that one million new studies is indexed in Medline every year. So it's really, uh, so he, he's, he argued very strongly that we should really have to use what is already there and the new discovery. I mean, discoveries is really a, for every researcher, I was the first to publish about this. I have made this discovery. It's named after me. That's really a driving force. But without, as the, the third quote here from 1984, uh, 100 years later, they state, uh, why do scientists think that new research is better or more insightful or more powerful? The underlying assumption must be that new study will incorporate uh, and improve upon lessons learned from earlier work. Novelty in and of itself it's shallow. Sorry to say, if you have, have something called after you. But novelty is in itself shallow without links to the past. For science to be cumulative, an intermediate step is between past and future research is necessary. And at that time, they didn't have the word systematic review, but they actually pointed out the very essence of what we are trying to promote, namely a synthesis in a systematic and transparent way of existing evidence. So you can say, well, everyone, have you ever seen a, a, a scientific paper without a reference? No one has seen that. I, I haven't. I, I, that's, uh, of course, and, and we have tried that here in Bergen. We actually uh, applied, the first time we applied, I can tell you, the second time we, we, get, we get this PhD program, but the first time we argue that we sh the PhD student should learn how to be evidence-based, and, and the committee uh, actually stated that, strictly speaking, it seems hard to imagine 
any research is not evidence-based. At least it seems impossible to imagine that articles published in journals with high impact facts are do not relate to earlier research. And I I'd m make this quote not, not to say something bad about the committee. Actually, uh, there, there was a member from the former committee in the new committee, so it's, it's not a criticism of those. It is a criticism, criticism of our own as researchers, our own way of thinking of doing research. What is important? And I, I, I mean, don't look at my reference list. I'm, I was not evidence-based uh, in every publication, so we do have a problem, I think. And, and this evidence-based research network, we, have, we are finalizing, I would say, uh, a scoping review of all the meta research, meaning all the research on research evaluating if people actually, or researchers actually were evidence-based or not. And, and this is just some preliminary finding. We are updating the search right now, uh, almost as we speak. Uh, so you can see here, we have identified some studies that uh, indicates that researchers continue to do irrelevant or unnecessary or redundant studies. You can see that uh, uh, there's no tradition and uh, not even close to try to quote all the studies uh, dealing with exactly the same clinical or research question. Uh, when, when you are quoting, when you are uh, making your background, your introduction, you try to, to uh, argue for the need for this study, to justify the study. Uh, and you, and, and uh, when you look closer, those who look closer into the introduction or into the discussion, when, uh, whether you have actually tried to place the results, the new results you have found, into the context of what is already known, very few, if not any, is doing that. Uh, that's at least the research on research or meta-research is indicating. And uh, a, a short example, and, and many of you have maybe seen that several times, but I think it's, it, it makes a, an important issue here. Uh, Karen Robinson, unfortunately, she couldn't be part of here, but she's a very important person in our evidence-based research network. She made this study and, and, and published it in 2011. And she showed that, okay, from those 1,523 studies she have identified who were characterized by the fact that each of them was able to quote at least three earlier studies dealing with exactly the same thing. Okay, you can see uh, uh, here there's 240 of those uh, 1,523 studies that could have quoted three, and there is uh, 77 who could have quoted 10, and so forth. What is the median number of studies they quoted? Two. Something else is going on. There's no difference whether you could quote 30 or 3 or 10. Or s there's something completely different going on. And, and I mean, this is not because someone likes to do things bad. That's another issue here. That's another way of thinking when it comes to research. I mean, uh, I was taught in the following way. You should have some good references in your background. You should have the biggest, the first, and the, and, uh, and the best. And maybe, of course, the Danish. I come from Denmark originally. Uh, and uh, so, so that's, 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 I think most of us are taught in that way. That's what uh, the goal is. But she even indicated that 55% were not even quoting anyone of the earlier studies. In, in the part of the, of the paper where they should justify why this study is needed. And another example is uh, Celine Habra. Uh, they identified in 2000 a systematic review of... Um, this is very basic. I mean, if you're giving propofol, uh, with the Venflon, it's, it can be very painful. And, and someone come up with the idea, uh, apparently in the beginning of the 80s, that maybe if you give lidocaine, it might help uh, and it would be better. So in 2000, a systematic review indicated, yes, that is very good. No reason to do any more studies, this is very good. After 2000, 136 studies were published. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. 49 of those studies were 
they were twisting the question a little bit. They were looking at another aspect of, of this uh, matter and, and discussion. So, well, only, <coughs> quotation mark, 87 studies was completely redundant. And the authors wrote in the discussion that they think that one of the reasons was that publication was part of a career. In order to getting a, a final position as a physician, you need to publish. And this is an easy study. No one is harmed, and it's, it's I mean, why not do that? You know, and, and, and in relation to the former uh, presentation, 75% of those 136 studies actually quoted the systematic review. So it's not a matter that, oh, we'll not tell people that we, we do know someone else has been here. That's not at all the business here. It's, it's a, something completely different going on. Um, uh, I think culture may be the, the umbrella word for that, but I don't know. Uh, so the problem is that meta research, contrary to what the committee, when the first um, uh, evaluated our PhD program, uh, state that researchers rarely use systematic reviews uh, and, and a systematic and transparent approach to justify or to design the new study or to place the new results in context. Sorry to say. So our suggestion is actually those two words. And I think it's important here because, you know, we could, we could simply say, okay, we should use systematic reviews. And then someone will think, oh my goodness, are you meaning that we're going to make Cochrane reviews? Uh, and two years or whatever it takes to make a co good Cochrane review. Uh, and and, and, and that, that's why I think that's one thing. Another thing is people are saying, oh, but you can, you can do a realist review, you can do a scoping review, you can do whatever kind of review. And there's so many different names for systematic reviews nowadays. So I think that maybe, maybe we should more carefully state what we are looking for is that when you're justifying when you're designing and when you're placing new results in context, it should be done in, in a systematic and, and a transparent way. If you look at the validity, the internal validity of studies, everyone agree that this should be done systematically. We should make sure that everything is done properly. So what we are adding to this, uh, to this uh, idea is actually that when you're justifying and designing and when you're placing new results in context, also should be systematic and transparent. That's the point. And nowadays, the systematic review is this evidence synthesis that Pilame and Light was mentioning in 1945. So that's the idea, so to speak. So I think we are very lucky, and I must, I must say that uh, thinking, about, thinking about the enormous uh, interest, uh, I mean, in, in April 13, we, uh, we, we got this money, and some of you I was, uh, was part of the proposal. Um, uh, we, I think we have nine cost countries in, in the April 13. And then I simply mailed to some of you, uh, could, you, could you please, do you have anyone in your network? And within an instant of one or two months or three months, we are, now we are 34 of 38 possible countries. And that's thanks to you. That is networking. That is because we are really we ha having an interest. So I'm really that uh, that's fantastic. And now we're able to we are able to have this. Uh, you can see the grant period. We are here in the first grant period, where we are having 130,000 euros. Uh, it, it's a very short period because we started in October. But every grant period is going from May to April. So we will have 169,000 euros in order to help us to meet and maybe making other workshops so we can discuss this matter in a good way. So this is, I think, fabulous. And, and you can see here that uh, we we'll, are still lacking people, uh, strangely enough, but Belgium uh, and Lithuania and uh, Montenegro and Albania so if any one of you know anyone there, and I, I know some of you already have mailed some names, but please, if you have any ideas, it would be very good, first of all, because we really would like to include as many as possible. 
uh, I mean, we went to Prague to have a core meeting uh, just three weeks ago. And Miloslav Kluger, who unfortunately are stuck due to bad weather in, 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 the, in the Czech Republic, he arranged that we had a meeting with the, with the Vice Minister of Health. And, and so he, he used this opportunity that we are coming to this country to make awareness of this, both in his own in, in institution, but also in the national level. So that's, that's really what we are talking about. Uh, we could also, would someone talk about IV members or participants? No, we are ambassadors in each of our countries to make this a reality, that whenever anyone is doing research, we're doing it in a, in a good way. So I think that, uh, that I think I will uh, stop with that because the next slide uh, will actually open up for what we are going to discuss in the next two hours. So welcome to Bergen and thank you again for your introduction and thank you for coming. <laughs>